Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this week in the Comp video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the i7-8670 processor from Intel. This appears to be a 6-core, 12-thread CPU, and has been spotted on GFX Bench. So we're going to be going through the specifications on that, and the supposed price point. Then we're going to move over to AMD because the stock has soared in the company thanks to takeover rumors. So of course we're going to be analyzing that. But the primary focus of this video is going to be AMD's roadmap because it has leaked online and it gives us the fascinating details such as the upcoming Threadripper replacement, uh, amazingly called Threadripper 2, Castle Peak, based upon the Zen 2 architecture and a lot more besides. So, without further ado, let's start things out once again with Intel. So, we're going to be starting things out with the i7-8670, and this one's interesting for numerous reasons, the first of which is the naming scheme is just totally bizarre. Typically, Intel reserves i7 to have then the 7 as the second number. So, for example, it would be the 67 whatever or it would be the 87 whatever but that's not the case here instead we see the 8670 processor which is rather intriguing it does appear however to be based upon the eighth generation processor architecture also known as coffee lake and according to the gfx bench entries we are looking at a 12 thread cpu so of course that's six cores of the physical variety which means 12 threads thanks to hyper threading the clock speed, however, is going to be considerably lower. It's only registering at 3.1 gigahertz. Now, whether that's because it's an early engineering sample, whether it's not being read correctly, for example, the base clock, boost clocks, that type of thing, we're not 100% sure yet. The iGPU, meanwhile, uh, offers a performance pretty much identical to the i7-8700 because it is the UHD 630 iGPU. Of course... Pricing is going to be really where this uh, is made or broken. Now, I personally believe that the CPU can't be any more than $300. In fact, I think $300 is going to be really pushing it. After all, uh, we saw AMD's leaked roadmaps. Sorry, not roadmaps. AMD's leaked pricing information. I'm thinking of roadmaps because, well, we're going to be discussing that later. So the leaked pricing information for the Zen Plus CPUs. And, of course, we've seen that they, those prices are very competitive indeed. But if they could release this at, let's say, the 270 280 US dollars mark, then perhaps it's possible this could be very compelling. Speaking of AMD, these are rumors strictly, but... AMD stock did jump, although it's falling back a little bit now, thanks to rumours of a fresh takeover. Now, a company taking over AMD, as news, is pretty consistent. Uh, but AMD, if you look at the intellectual property available to the company, it is ridiculous. First of all, they are the only company that at least in the x86 space, can produce, well, pretty much anything. They can produce CPUs, they can produce APUs, they can produce GPUs. They are one of the companies that, if you were to look at them as a theoretical company, they should be worth way more than what they are. They, in theory at least, should be up there with Intel. So these rumours started, uh, which were unsubstantiated, but within less than an hour, their share price went up over a dollar. So... There are numerous things we need to take into consideration here. The first is that it's actually very difficult for a company to purchase AMD in some respects because, first of all, there is a lot of agreements that AMD already have in place that they would need to continue to service. So, for example, if Microsoft, and obviously this is not the rumor, I'm just giving an example, if Microsoft were to buy AMD, well, AMD still have a contractual obligation to provide the PS4 APUs and the PS4 Pro APUs and whatever else. So there is that to take into consideration. And also, certain companies just probably wouldn't buy them at this point. NVIDIA, if they would have purchased a company in the x86 space, it definitely would, of course, be AMD. After all, they can't touch Intel. But with that said... AMD have the x86 license from Intel. So the question is, if NVIDIA were to take over AMD, would 
that license be transferable? Well, we don't really know yet because technically the X64 license is owned by AMD and AMD, of course, are lending that to Intel. It's kind of messy. Another theory that's going around is a reverse takeover. So in this reverse takeover, Zelenix would be the company which would merge with AMD and AMD management would be joined with Zelenix people on the board. And in theory, at least, this would protect the x86 license, which, of course, is so precious. For those unfamiliar with Zelenix, it is the folks who created the FPGAs, which are alternatives to ASIC mining for Bitcoin currencies. My personal standpoint on this, and yes, I'm going to use a pun, but I wouldn't put much stock into this. Ha, 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 ha. Anyway, let's move over to perhaps the biggest piece of news, well, actually, undoubtedly the biggest piece of news in this particular video anyway. The Desktop Zen roadmap has leaked onto the internet, and this is spanning from 2018, so this year, if you're watching this in a different date, to 2020. And this comes to us from Informatica Zero, um, and AMD appear at least to be adopting an approach which was very similar indeed to Intel's old TikTok methodology and they are referring to this as inflection and then optimization so let's start out with the client desktop ro platform roadmap and let's go from last year just for a second so fred ripper of course was released on top of summit ridge and we see bristol ridge so they comprise of the hedt the mainstream and finally the uh, lower performance sector um in kind so inflection is a new process technology and a new cpu core fast forward to this year which of course is 2018 once again fred ripper is the second generation of fred ripper uh, pinnacle ridge which is zen plus and raven ridge are also going to be released now amd are referring to this as optimization this is process maturity and efficiency improvements in short this is taking what is existing and just tweaking it making small corrections and changes based upon the stuff that we've discussed a thousand times before. For new viewers, that would be things such as boosting the clock speed, as I said uh, a couple of days ago and yesterday's video as well. It looks like the Ryzen 7 2700X is running at 4.35 GHz for peak. There were improvements in the caching, which means uh, lower latency and several other things. Basically, the CPU has been optimized over the first generation. Now, let's move over to Castle Peak. Metassi and Picasso. So, Fred Ripper second generation will, of course, be released this year. We've discussed that um, multiple times before. But Castle Peak appears to be a new process. It's going to be based upon a new processor core. So, this appears, at least from what we're reading here, to be the Zen 2 architecture. Not too surprising. So, what we have here, of course, is the original Zen architecture for 2017, Zen Plus for 2018, Zen 2, which is going to form the basis of Castle Peak, Metassi, and Picasso, at least in the CPU side of things. And then, in 2020, we see a rather cryptic NG, H-E-D-T, which we can presume, of course, means Next Generation, High End Desktop, Vermeer, and Renault. And those were going to enter the market in 2020. Before we continue with further analysis, there's also another slide which is very interesting indeed. And this one is further confirmation of a slide that we discussed yesterday, uh, which basically shows us that there are only a couple of SKUs in the Ryzen 2000 lineup. And indeed, what we have here is to show that we're going to be looking at only four new SKUs released over the next couple of months. We see the 2700X, the 2700, which of course are both Ryzen 7s, and then the Ryzen 5 lineup is going to be the 2600X and the 2600 non-X. In short, there's going to be no 2800X whatsoever, which means the customer choice has been somewhat narrowed down. One would argue, and my personal opinion, is that the 1800X wasn't necessarily a bad processor, but I don't necessarily feel that it offered value for money in off, quite often, not all cases, but quite often the 1800X and the 1700X were overclocked roughly on par with one another, give or take a few hundred megahertz, but generally they were pretty much even in all but the extreme cases you would have like one or 200 megahertz at the absolute maximum difference. So it represented fairly poor performance, uh, sorry, poor value for money. 
assuming we're still looking at the typical node behavior we've seen previously, then 7nm FinFET is most likely going to be based upon a 10nm backbone. So it's most likely we're not going to see working chips for this until at least 2018, possibly early 2019 before the prototypes are ready for the 7nm varieties here. But AMD do have a very compelling roadmap. And don't forget, the purpose of this roadmap is for their partners. It's to emphasize that they are here to play. And the Intel do have excellent competition coming up in the in the um, free areas that AMD are showing us that they're competing in here. All in all, it's a great time for AMD. They look like they've got their CPU division down to the point where they're not necessarily going to be outselling Intel, but they're going to be offering a very, 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 very competitive set of alternatives. We can only wait to see what happens with the GPU side of things, though, over the next several months and certainly over the next couple of years and how they're going to be competing with NVIDIA. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, subscribe, and stick around if you do want more information on this stuff because we'll definitely be covering it. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.